Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Julia Zamora. And I'm Aaron Thompson filling in for Lynn Schroeder. Azaleas and some rhododendrons are starting to crack color. In our first segment, we're going to talk about these landscape favorites. Japanese maples are some of the most sought-after trees in the nursery. Dwarf trees like Crimson Queen, I don't say that three times quickly, (laughs) only get a few feet tall and grow very slowly. Others can reach 25 feet tall and shade your house. We'll discuss some of our favorites in our second segment. What did the one hummingbird say to the other hummingbird? I just flew across the Gulf of Mexico, and boy, are my wings tired. (laughs) (laughs) In our third segment, we're going to talk about this amazing flower feeder and its incredible migration. Just like garden temperature soils, the water temperature in your pond sparks all types of activity. We'll tell you what you need to do to get your water garden running up smoothly. Listen in the fourth segment. Our friend Professor Steve called us from Florida and was heading back north, hauling back some of his plants. Listen to his call in our final segment. So stay tuned and we'll be right back in the garden after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com and we'll see you in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Fertilum's Azalea and Evergreen Food plus Systemic Insecticide 915-3 contains five micronutrients which are designed for azaleas and evergreens to provide the proper nutrients and producing stunning green leaves and essential new growth while protecting the plant from damaging insects for up to eight weeks. Fertilum's Azalea and Evergreen Food contains 9% nitrogen for green growth, building bigger stems and leaves, 15% phosphorus for root growth and increased flower production, 13% potash to promote vigorous growth so plants are better able to resist disease and cold. The micronutrients are the icing on the cake to enhance further growth, Strengthen and beautify color. Tired of seeing your plants prematurely drop their leaves, the flowers disappear? Fertilum's Azalea Evergreen Food plus Systemic Insecticide 91513 contains an easy-to-apply insecticide that keeps your azaleas and evergreens looking great all year long. Those hungry insects do not have a chance. Apply in spring before bud sprout and continue throughout the season as indicated on the label growing guide. Fertilum's Azalea and Evergreen Food plus Systemic Insecticide 91513 with micronutrients is a must for the passionate Azalea and Evergreen grower to help produce that beautiful abundance of color and fantastic fragrance everyone will love. So next time you visit your favorite garden center, pick up Fertilum's Azalea and Evergreen Food plus Systemic and expect to have the best looking shrubs in the neighborhood. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 AM WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Well, folks, 
as you can tell, azaleas and rhododendrons are starting to crack color. Yes, huh? yes, Hi, yes. Yeah, they're almost. Yes. Uh, we see it's it in Garden Center right now, and uh, bright, it's just beautiful a, colors. Oh man. yeah, aren't they though? Purples and pinks. Purple and pinks, yeah. yeah. Some, uh, ye- some yellow rhododon- rhododendrons. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you say it, rhododendron, rhododendron. now. Yeah. Before it's <laughs> rhododendron. I get it, I get it. <laughs> but, you know, it's something interesting about it. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of people think that, um, you know, there's a misconception about azaleas and rhododendron. Mm-hmm. A lot of people think that they belong to the same family. Like, uh, mm-hmm. you know, all azaleas are rhododendron. They are, right? yeah. Rhododendron, same, right? Same cultivar. Yeah. But not all rhododendron. Or azaleas, azaleas, right? It right. doesn't work both ways around. So that's, that's, right. that's interesting, man. It but, is interesting, yeah. yeah. One of the things that's, you know, like we were just talking about, they're start, starting to crack open right now, and is they really are vibrant. I mean, you know, it gets you excited to the point where, you know, this is spring right now. Right. And, and we're getting right into it, and we see it, and uh, we have people coming in and say, wow, you know where your, where your azalea's at? I hear that all the time when they come in. It's, so it's a great, iconic plant to have. Sure. And, uh, but there are certain needs for them. And uh, one of those needs is that you know, they, they enjoy a little bit of dappled shade, and they can handle the sun, especially the azaleas. Rhododendrons, not as much. Right. You know, they like more a shady area. Right. But no, nothing in the afternoon sun, which kind of really hurts them. I had a I had a, a customer come in uh, yesterday. She said, "Oh, you know, my azaleas there the the edges are uh, brown." Right. And I asked her, you know, what happened during the summer months when uh, you know uh, it gets a little hot out there and uh, <sighs> kind of dry. And she's told me that she didn't really water them that much, and uh, that's one of the key uh, elements. You've really got to keep uh, you know on top of them on, sure. when it's really uh, hot and in the summer sun, it might hit them a little bit, and uh, so you need to keep up on the watering of it. Now, that's because the root systems are, are higher up than any other plant. So they're, they're kind of shallow. So you got to make sure that that happens. Now, in the springtime right now, what you want to do is you want to add some compost to them to give them that organic matter that they need early and then put a little bit of uh, uh, holly tone on there which because they're a little bit of it. They love acidity. So acidic uh, is uh, what they like in their soil. So what you need to do also is uh, take a test, take a pH test, and uh, and uh, make sure that that's uh, uh, happening. So you're talking about 5.5 to 6.5. Right. So right. go into your garden center, and uh, I know at Bloomers we have free testing of our soils. Yep. So come on in, and we'll make sure that happens. So it's very critical for the for these plants to have acidic soil. If not, you're going to see them. If they uh, get a little bit more alkaline, you're going to see some yellowing, and that's going to be a problem for you, okay? So come on in, and we'll take care of that issue for you. Yep. And also, there's, you know, we've gone through uh, not a bad winter, but, you know, there, are, there were times where it's really cold, and those cold winter winds hit. And so some of the plants will get winter injury. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the, the winter winds will dry them up a little bit. So, you know, giving them that, you know, organic matter, you know, giving them the, the fertilizer and uh, putting some mulch down too, that'll help a great deal. For sure. To uh, make those, make sure that they're nice and damp and um, that way uh, you're not uh, watering as much sometimes, okay? So are, aren't our azaleas considered deciduous uh, in, in a sense where they lose their leaves in the winter, uh, in the fall? Well, where, yes, there's some that are. They're called deciduous uh, azaleas. Okay. And uh, you, we have them at our garden center, and I'm sure there's others garden centers that carry them, but they're a little different. They're a little, you know, they um, they have the their their uh, their flowers are a little bit bigger, okay. and uh, you, they're more clustered. Yeah, I'm, and, I mean, uh, this is all like I said, this is all new. I'm the newest guy yeah, in the, in the clan, so I got to ask questions yeah. and learn. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's right. Like, yeah, uh, they, and they and they uh, their leaves do fall, by the way, but. Okay. Um, they're very, they're very beautiful. They're stunning, and when when you see them, and uh, you might want their, uh, they could go to about five, six, seven foot, no problem. Okay. I mean, yeah. the, the one thing that I do, I, I love the colors. I, I mean, oh, the yeah, color the variety colors. of the azaleas. Mm-hmm. Uh, rhododendron. I, I've had, you know, I've got two in my house. I was just talking to Lynn about it earlier. I got two in my house in North Jersey, and um, I wanted to transport them and put them in front of my house down oh, here. Okay. <laughs> but for what it's worth, yeah, I don't uh, think that's going to yeah. happen. Yeah, I don't but I love that. the color that it gives me in the colder months. You know what I mean? Like sure. it, it's, it's still, it's still, it's, it's, I mean, most rhododendrons are, or <laughs> rhododendrons, see, I'm saying it again. Yeah, most rhododendrons are uh, considered um, 
from my understanding, they're evergreens. Yes, you those know? are evergreens. That's so, correct. Yeah. So, um, but you know, mm-hmm. it's it's not like I said the the definitive characteristics of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I definitely can tell, like the you know, like the uh, rhododendron have like the bell kind of bell shaped bell shaped yeah. mm-hmm. leaves and um like the blooms it's just like oh they're massive fly. yeah, yeah big, big, plenty of big. pop yeah absolutely yeah. it'll add something to your color swatch That's there right. on your palette there <laughs> yeah. yeah so uh you know yeah as Adam was saying you know they they, they make an, an impact it's really amazing especially you know in, in a shady area where it's a little darker and, and you know you don't see much color uh, coming in that area and uh so you'll get that in, in the early spring so that, yeah. that that's a beautiful thing to have, man. All right, get me get me through the winter, man. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but everything's dormant in the yard. Yeah, it is. That's yeah. everything's dormant. All right, we're gonna take a break here. Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll do that. We'll pay some bills. We'll be back right after these messages in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Are you looking forward to a spring of vibrancy while using the best organically approved growing media for your annuals and vegetables? Coast of Maine's Sprout Island Organic Seed Starter has been created to set a diverse culture Ideal for germinating seeds and root cuttings. Created using the best ancient composting techniques and new age mixing devices, Sprout Island Organic Seed Starter gently combines kelp meal, worm castings, mycorrhiza, perlite, and sustainably harvested peat moss, establishing the most desirable setting to enhance new plant growth. Coast of Maine's Sprout Island Organic Seed Starter is available at these local retailers. Or visit www.coastofmaine.com to locate one near you. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Ashcombe Farm and Greenhouses, Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Tony's Farm and Garden, Windsor, New Jersey. Your next houseplant is waiting for you in Bloomer's Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomer's recognizes that houseplant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A houseplant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large, revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. We're back in the garden. Yes, we are. Man, Japanese maples are some of the most sought-after trees yes, in our nurseries, especially oh, at Bloomers, yeah, man, really. right? 
highly ornamental dwarf trees only get a few feet tall and grow very slowly. Yeah. Others can reach about 25 feet and shade your house. I mean, mm-hmm. I know I need that in my backyard. Oh, you do. <laughs> yeah, I told you my attic is on fire. Oh, yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> you got that right. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what. You know, we had the greatest collection this year, I think, from uh, that I've, I can remember since I've been at Bloomer's. Uh, thank you, Carl, for bringing all those uh, yes. beautiful varieties. Yes, yeah. yes, Carl. Yeah, Shout out to job. Carl. Anyway. Um, Carl's our nursery manager, yes, if you don't is. know, right? He's, That's he's, right. he's yeah, a Carl's son of our Lynn. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Japanese maples, folks, they are the most beautiful plants you can have. And uh, we get a lot of people coming in and asking for it. And one of the reasons being is that it doesn't flower. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. And... Um, the beauty of it is in the actual leaves, and um, I think that's what people are attracted to. And uh, so we get that a lot, and, you know, and and uh, so they come in and say, oh, you know, I want the uh, Burgundy one. So we kind of know what you're looking at. But now that, you know, that has expanded right now in, in our garden center, and uh, we're, we're going to go over some some of those here. But just to let you know, there are, there's two different types of uh, Japanese maples. There's called the uh, Acer Palmatum. That's the regular leaf. And then we also have the Acer Dissectum, which are the really lace leaf uh, form. And you'll see them, how they're very delicate. Have you seen them? Uh, I have. Yep. I they're, have. they're really have. incredible, aren't they? Yeah. They're... But, you know, the, the, uh, the Japanese maple, when you, you're going to put that in your, in your garden, you know, it's going to be the wow factor. It's going to be the one that says, oh, look at me. Right. I am really beautiful. And it's going to stand out completely from the rest of your plants. Sure. And uh, so you want to really look at that in your garden when you when you look at, at Japanese maples. And uh, I'm going to go some to, uh, with uh, some of the varieties that we have in our garden center, and uh, they're they're truly amazing. And uh, one of the first ones that I'm going to talk to you about is the most popular one. It's going to be the blood good. You know that one? Oh Karen? yeah. Oh yeah. That's one of the most beautiful plants. Yeah. It's very an popular. upright. Uh, plant is going to it can go about 20 feet high and about 20 feet wide and that is an all an acer palmatum so you're, it's not the uh it's a regular leaf gotcha right? gotcha and uh it's gonna it's a deep deep uh burgundy color okay it's yeah. uh and, it, and it's gonna be a large a large tree so you're gonna have to know where to put it and not too close to the home and the leaves are uh, deep like i said deep rich purple and uh, they are beautiful and, and, and when they come out and and, and they and they really uh, can endure the summer heat by the way and so it's a crimson color and scarlet and it, and it's an incredible plant you we have one in our uh, yep. nursery yep absolutely the next one is called the uh, Veridis and uh, this is a lace leaf maple that we talked about okay and it's a cascading top of a, 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 a tree and what it does it branches down Right, and it, it kind of goes over delicately with the leaves, and uh, they're they're going to come out green, mm-hmm. and and in the, in the fall they're going to turn golden yellow wow. to red. Wow, Isn't that beautiful, beautiful, yeah, gorgeous. That mm-hmm. one's going to get about seven foot tall, and they're all going to grow about eh, maybe a foot each year. So, That's uh, fast. That one is fast. Yeah, a, little, a foot each year. Yeah. Uh-huh. They, they can range, by the way, from 6 to 12 inches a year. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. So, yeah, depends, that's, a, that's a fast one. Pedal to the metal. Yeah, it is. Growth spurts every year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 the next one is going to be ta- Tamukiyama, if you can say that. Tamukiyama? Yeah. Okay. That's Sounds awesome. like a hibachi joint. Yeah, it like is. Like I am. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, this is also a lace leaf maple. Okay. And it's extremely vigorous, and it has uh, survived the test of time. Okay. So uh, you, you know you're getting a really good plant here. Sure. Uh, sure. It's a it's a bright crimson color, and it really it's a really gorgeous color. By the way, it turns dark, and uh, and it retains its color even during the hot summers. Wow. So it's a really good plant to have. The autumn scarlet ter- uh, tone returns to uh, it's a little bit more bolder. Okay. Okay. So, um, and this one is going to be about seven foot tall, and it can get about 10 wide if you let it go. Huh. Again, you're looking, it's going to be about six to 12 inches each year. 
And uh, they can take sun and both uh, part shade. Wow, that is fast. Yeah. Seven to 10 inches in a year. I'm still like, I'm just, yeah. I don't, maybe I'm just not aware of the, uh -huh. how fast trees grow. At least Japanese maple trees. That's fast. Yeah. Uh, well, some of them are going to go a little sl slower. Okay. 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 Now, our next one is going to be Crimson Queen lace hmm. leaf, another lace yeah. leaf, right? It's very sculptural and it cascades down to the branches. And, and it's finely dissected leaves are beautiful. Um, they're going to be uh, red, okay, in the beginning. And it's going to be a bright crimson reddish type. And in the this, in this summertime, it turns a little bit more burgundy. Okay. So um, you're going to get a different color as the season goes on. Our friends at and, Rutgers would like that, right? The, yes. the Lady Scarlets, the, the Scarlet, <laughs> Scarlet <laughs> Nights. Don't yeah. they have like a, a horticultural center, center up there or something yeah, like they that? Do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We send our soils and things like that to get tested to them. I love that color, man. Crimson. Crimson Queen. Crimson Queen, yeah. It's Crimson a beauty, Queen. isn't it? That one, again, is going to be about seven foot tall. So, um, okay. That one's a nice nice plant to have in the front of your garden. Yeah. And uh, it's a great plant to have. Now, this is a really neat one. It's called Twombly's Red Sentinel Japanese Maple. Twombly. Yeah, Twombly. Okay. T-W-O-M-B-L-Y-S. All right. And it's a uh, it's a pomatum, so it's not a lace leaf. Oh, okay, all right. Gotcha, gotcha. And it's um it's going to get a little taller. It's going to be about twenty foot tall. But the nice thing about this, it doesn't get as broad. Okay, you know, so it'll get a maybe about more maybe ten foot. Okay, oh, okay. So, so if you have a all small right. area, yeah, I think that'll fit really nicely there. So um, now I'm I'm kind of, I'm curious. Are uh, they uh are they good trees to grow in shade area or how, how do it, can you place them? Like for instance, in a backyard mm. where the sun is kind of covered, um, there are much I, like in my backyard, I have right. a lot taller trees sure. than, you know, which would, you know, a, a baby, <laughs> a baby, baby. Uh, Japanese maple, right? Sure. Compared to if I would, if I were to set it, I would be, I'm asking cause I'm, I'm interested in number one, but right. um, I, I wanted to know, you know, how well do they do in the shade? They do good in the shade, but here's the thing. It can't be deep shade because what happens is the leaves will lose that vibrant color okay. that, that it needs. But it, So okay. it does need some sun. Right. And I think preferably morning sun would be great. Okay. An afternoon shade would be nice. So, yeah. You know, dappled shade, a little bit of shade. Would, I guess my help. backyard's out because my, yeah. my sun's all coming in the afternoon. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Now, not that they can't take it, but you're going to have to okay. keep up on the watering. Okay. And it, it, it might suffer a little bit Just with the leaves. Because, okay. you know, especially the lace leaf might right. suffer a little bit. Right. But it doesn't mean it's going to uh, die or anything. It's just going to struggle a little bit from okay. the uh, from the drought, you know, from the hotter season. Okay. And you'll see that on the edges of the leaves will turn a little brown. So you've okay. got to keep up on the watering. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And um, so this is a great plant to have... Uh, Aaron, and, yeah. uh, you know, especially if you want a little bit of a height. Yeah. And uh, it's a beautiful color. Like I said, it's a, it's like a. Um, Twombly. It's a, yeah, it's a Twombly, yeah. Okay. It's, and um, so you, you, you would enjoy this one. Yeah. And uh, so the, we have another one. It's called Rhode Island. Now, this yeah. is really awesome. We've only had it for a little while, Couple, but we yeah. had it last year. I, rem I remember this one really clear. Yeah. Uh, it's been a hit in our uh, garden center. It's a dwarf. Uh, it's a palmatum, and it's in it's um, it's kind of upright. Okay. And it, but it only goes about six foot tall. Yeah. Right, about six foot wide, which yeah. is really nice for a small garden. And uh, you know, they remind me of the mature ones, right? They they remind me of like the you remember the little gun gum drop, <laughs> like yeah. <you> gum drop, <laughs> yeah, gum drop. Uh, style uh, yeah. candy. Yeah, that's what they remind they me remind of. Remind you of yeah, that's right? what, it's and really how they're cool. shaped. You know, not necessarily the mushroom. They're just mm -hmm. like the little you know thimble style. Simple. You know, yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> now this this when they first come out, the leaves come out. They're a little on the darker side. Okay. Okay. And then uh, and then what happens is they turn orange to red in the winter, and you know in the in the fall time. So um, sure. So it goes dark red, and then it turns a little bit lighter into a reddish, you know, orangey, which is really awesome. Awesome. Yeah, that's a beautiful plant. Beautiful plant. And uh, here's a really neat one uh, we have from Monrovia. It's called Ryusin. Right, and it's a weeping Japanese maple. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm. Is that so? When when it, in the weeping variety, uh -huh. um, how different? Do, I guess is it is it the branches that yes. lean over, or is it the, the yeah? This, the that's flower? correct. Okay. They, they, the branches just you know lean over, right? Like, and and uh, it's this one's going to be about twenty. About eh, it'll reach about twenty probably. Huh. And um, but you know, it's just it's just. 
it's just like think of it as a you know just weeping down, right? right. And it, that's going to be really different than all the other ones, you know. You know that kind of spread out a little mm-hmm, bit. Mm-hmm. So this one just weeps. Okay, it's okay, really okay. an amazing one, and um, I think that's going to be a hit for us. Yeah. And, uh, yep. Wow. So just keep you know just keep an eye on the watering for for the first year, right? And because uh, you know they're delicate, they're delicate, and um, they're going to need that. And then um, you can enjoy this kind of plant because. Really, it's the wow that you see in that in that plant. You know, the leaves are going to change colors. It's it's a beautiful you know transition into uh, into like probably spring and into fall, which you don't get into many into other plants. Right. So, um, Japanese maple folks, you know, go out there and uh, and make sure that you're looking at them. You know, now go in now and look at how they look now, and then uh, pretty soon you're going to see the the beauty of this plant. And the way it's forming and the way it's uh, opening up their leaves, sure. And that's that's the uh, incredible part about you know plants looking wow. at how they uh, mature and how they change from you know season to season. Amazing, Julio. Yeah, it is. Wow, wow, that's good. Good information. That's good stuff, man. Good stuff. Thank huh? you, man. Appreciate you're you always answering a question for me, guys. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna take a break right after these messages, guys. We'll see you back in the garden in just a second. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Do you think you have insects eating away your nice, beautiful lawn? Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below is the product for you. Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below not only controls chinch bugs, which is a surface feeding insect, but also controls grubs, which is a subsurface feeding insect. It does it all guaranteed. When most homeowners see their lawn turning brown in the summer, they think grubs. Damage from the larva of Japanese beetle. But in many cases, it could be chinch bugs. Chinch bugs are hard to see because they are so small and you'd need to get down on your hands and knees to see them. If you misdiagnose your problem, Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below has you covered. The product will control both chinch bugs and grubs. This summer, control your pest problems with Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below. It also may be used in flower beds, on landscape ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below will also control crane fly larvae, ants, mole crickets, sod webworms, bill bugs, and many more. Your property will be pest-free with Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below. So next time you're visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below and expect to have the best-looking lawn and landscape in the neighborhood. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Coles, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower, peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomers Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomers in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomers Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. 
On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Well, Aaron, you know, I'm, I'm getting excited because yes. hummingbirds are, are an attraction to a lot of people. And uh, sure. right now, they're getting closer and closer to us, by the way. Yeah. And um, they're an amazing jewel and our, and our gardens in spring to fall, aren't they? Yeah. They are tireless workers. Yeah, you see those they, little they just wings? keep going. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they keep they Absolutely. keep moving, don't they? Absolutely. They're they're amazing. Now they they uh these guys, they, they are traveling you know, five hundred miles nonstop nonstop, by the way. <laughs> across the Gulf of Mexico during both spring and fall migrations, that, that's quite a feat for a little for these little birds yeah. like that. They're not even at like what an inch? No, <laughs> a couple inches. <laughs> right, jet blue. That's oh right. My gosh. Now, is it true they ride on the back of other birds during migration? <laughs> what do you think? I don't know if I buy that. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I have, mean, I, I've heard them. I've heard. The, I've heard, heard it before. It? Have you? But I. I mean, I've never seen it. No, I haven't either. I've never seen it. So, I mean, it could be. My binoculars probably don't reach yet. <laughs> it is yeah. a myth, by the way, Aaron. Okay. However, these these tiny birds, they ride on the back of other birds during migration. No, they fly this distance completely on their own. They're pretty much solitary. You know, it's not like they're in a flock or anything like that. Sure. They, just, they just go on their own, which is, a, which is another ma- amazing feat, by the hmm. way. You know, I like to be with other birds. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, hummingbird migration is triggered by the amount of daylight, not the amount of available food. So they understand this, and that's it's an innate kind of thing that they have. Okay. And uh, so you know, God, has, God has done a beautiful uh, job inside those birds, huh? Wow. Uh, some folks worry that leaving their feeders up will cause hummingbirds to remain in the area and freeze to death in the winter. Uh, this is uh, completely false, by the way. Hummingbirds uh, do have a fantastic memory and will return to that same feeder every year. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> that's correct. So, you know, folks, get yourself a feeder at yeah. your local guard center. And uh, so you have these birds coming back. They are very loyal, by the way, and they understand where the food is at every year if you're consistently doing this. Uh, if, if they're not out, the feeders aren't out, the hummingbirds, they're going to leave to look in other areas for food and uh, probably not return. It's true that our little friends come back to us loyally, but they can't, can't live more than hours without nectar. Which wow. is, uh, you know, they because of the they have so much energy that they're uh, yeah. getting rid of flying. You know, those, those replenish, yeah, yeah. Those wings are traveling, f- f- flapping a mile away, a million oh, miles away. Goodness, right? Yeah, along with their hearts, their hearts are beating quick. <laughs> Can't imagine how fast yeah. their heart is. Oh, beating. Uh, like uh, I've heard, two thousand beats per minute. God, but, yeah. Lee, that's faster than the wings. Oh yeah, <laughs> and when they're sitting down, they're like two hundred and fifty. Wow. Yeah. So you know. Could you imagine your heart? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, it couldn't hurt, it couldn't make it. Blow right out of our chest. That's right. <laughs> so, you know, we, so you return your feeder every year, folks. You know, don't don't uh, forget about it or, you know, and um, just say, oh, you know, I'm not going to do it this year because they are beautiful birds and they're going to be loyal to you. They're going to sure. come back. You're going to have fun with it. You know, I had a customer the other day say she, she had one come and uh, the predator praying mantis came and they were going at it. Huh. That must have been an incredible, fe- you know, look, thing to look at. Hummingbird versus praying mantis. Yeah. Wow, that imagine? sounds like a <laughs> that uh, sounds like a movie, right? Yeah, it probably was <laughs> a Marvel, a Marvel movie, a Marvel movie. Right? Yeah, <laughs> it's cool. Now these feeders are not um, out. If the, if these feeders aren't out, the, the hummingbirds will hummingbirds will leave the, to look for uh, another place to get gotcha. their food from. So uh, you know, make sure that you know you have it out there. But you know, you can always supplement. You can, if you have a perennial garden, mm-hmm. that might be more reliable, okay, than you are filling your feeder with nectar, okay? Yeah. Now, nectar is, you can buy that in a, in a garden center, t- you know, at our stores or your local garden centers. Talk to me about nectar, man. I don't... Uh, I, yeah, he, yeah we, I'll give you a recipe, okay? Right. And uh, it's an artificial nectar syrup. Uh, you use one part ordinary white cane sugar to four parts water. 
Hmm. Now, it isn't necessary to boil the water. You don't need to do that. Okay. Okay. The microorganisms that cause ter- uh, fermentation don't come from the water. They are transported to the feeder hummingbird's bills. Isn't that amazing? Absolutely. Store unused syrup in a refrigerator. For, you can keep it there for about two weeks. That, that shouldn't be a problem. Now, this mixture approximately uh, has the average of sucrose content of about 21% of the flowers favored by North American hummingbirds. That's pretty good. Yeah. Without being so sweet, you know, to, that attracts other uh, insects. Uh, I still like using a red mix, you know, like the Broomers has a mix. And uh, we have it. It's an organic mix, by the way. And uh, the dye comes from hibiscus flowers. And so it's an organic uh you know, food, which is really good for them. So that you can do, you know, you can come in in the garden center and look for that. Uh, I like using the red because you can see it and uh, I don't have to, you know, get my glasses out, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so um, that's a good thing. Now, there are plants out there that they really prefer, especially perennials. Uh, one of them being bee balm, right? Uh, it's a Close. beautiful, beautiful plant. It's mon- called monarda. Another one is canna. Okay. Right. Another one is uh, carta flower. One of their favorites. Now they like to put, you know, put their little beaks inside this flower. Okay. And uh, they're attracted to red flowers a lot, but you know, not necessarily day, all red. But you know, cardinal flower is a very, very uh, uh, one that they come to uh, quite a bit. Columbine is another one. Yeah. Um, they love that one. Corabels. Yeah. Yeah. There you I've go. Gotten very familiar with them. Yeah, have you? In our perennial department, right? Yeah, like, yeah absolutely. <laughs> we have a fox love. They enjoy that one. Yep. Hostas, if you have you know a, a shady area, and uh, they're going to come right to that. Mm-hmm. So uh, make sure you get your hostas out. Yep. And yep. Uh, buy some of those for for that area that they can come by. The cardinal flower is another beautiful uh, plant that they come to come to. Uh, columbines, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, the other one. Cora bells, boy, they, they, you know, they're they're really uh, strong to that one. Fox gloves, and um, now some shrubs, trumpet vine. Now they they really love the trumpet vine, and uh, that's one you really need to have if you're going to bring them in. Honeysuckle, boy, they, you can. That's another great uh, vine to have, and uh, they they're attracted to that one. The butterfly bush is a uh, great. Great uh, plant to have in the summertime, and you'll, they'll enjoy that one a bit. Rose of Sharon is another one. Yeah. Nice big flowers, and uh, they, they'll get go right to that nectar. Now we also have annuals that they are attracted to, so you're not only limited to perennials or, or these shrubs that we're talking about. And you have fuchsias. Fuchsias, are, they're very attracted to those, and uh, they enjoy that to have for nectar. Petunias. I've seen some come to my petunias in yeah. my home. Yeah. Really amazing to have them. Lantana is another one. It's yeah. another beautiful plant uh, to have in your garden and in your pottery. And uh, Mandevilla. Who would have ah, thought Mandevilla? Right. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Beautiful plant to, to, that they can enjoy and, uh, and uh, have their nectar. So you have a lot of options out here to, to bring in your, uh, your hummingbirds. Are be coming in. I think they'll be coming in pretty soon, in about a couple of weeks, in our area, in New Jersey and Pennsylvania area. So, get ready, folks, to put out your your product of uh, that we're talking about. You know, your hummingbird feeder and your uh, and your hummingbird food. So, get ready, be prepared, because they're coming soon. It's around a bend, and you're going to enjoy these beautiful gems that we've been talking about. They're really. They're amazing birds to have. I had one whiz by me, and I didn't know what it was. And I, and I looked over, and I go, wow, that is an incredible yeah. little bird. Wow. And it just brings a little joy into your life, you know? Yeah. Who knew nectar was so important? I know. Right. Who would have thought of that, right? It just tastes good. I mean, to <laughs> it's, me. it's what we learn, isn't awesome. it? It's awesome. a, you know, in nature, we learn all about these beautiful things that you know, we wouldn't uh, anywhere else. Yep. Yep. So uh, anyway, we're, we're going to come back in our next segment and uh, take a little break. So we'll see you back in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. 
1-800-273-8080. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Your next houseplant is waiting for you in Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomers recognizes that houseplant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A houseplant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large, revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with their number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Hollytone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Well, folks, the water temperature in your pond sparks all types of activity, and we can see that right now. We'll tell you what you need to do to get your water garden up and running smoothly. Right, Len? Yes. Yeah. We got, we got, there's a lot going on, folks. We see those fish are really active right now. Well, if you've noticed that uh, I've been off the show, I'm having mm-hmm. throat issues. Yep. Uh, Julio, it's all about water. Mm-hmm. First of all, what's your temperature of your water? 50 degrees, 50 fish want to eat. Mm-hmm. And that you want to feed them early with a wheat germ type uh, food. It is matching their metabolism. They're still on just waking up and, and becoming active. And you'll start seeing them floating at the top, but don't overfeed Don't them. overfeed it, no. That's going to be a big problem because that will foul your water. Mm-hmm. You're will... going to get ammonia in there, and that's the biggest culprit of uh, getting your fish dying and they can't breathe. They're stressed out. Right. So uh, you need to come into the garden center, and we will be able to take a, uh, a test on that for you. And so... Please cut, make sure that you're testing your, your uh, pond weekly, especially now in the beginning, to make sure that, that those levels are correct. The issue is, is that the rotting debris in the bottom of a pond plus the fish waste, which is poop, poop and, and, uh, uh, yep. <laughs> where if you're overfeeding your fish, that's just contributing to the ammonia issue. Mm-hmm. You need to use microbolif PL in the water, and that adds kind of like a septic system where it will break down the the um, any of the leaves and debris and the and the fish waste as well as you know the waste from your plants and reduce that into a safe environment for your fish uh, it also will seed your filter so that you don't have issues with yeah. high ammonia, ammonia yeah. and that's where everything takes place mm-hmm. yeah it's really you know you- if you're doing a, uh, if you're doing a spring cleanup, and you've already, you know, you don't have that much gook or much junk at the bottom, like Len was saying, organic matter, you can do a little uh, spring uh, prep of just getting uh, 25% of your water out of the pond. So just doing a water change. Change. You yep. Just you're do just a water changing change. water change. Yep. Reduce 20 to 25% of your water and just replace it. Replace but it. you want to make sure that you're using a chlorine and heavy metal neutralizer That's because correct. again, it's going to make that safe for your fish. Mm-hmm. I would also add stress coat at that time mm-hmm. just simply because that will protect the fins and the scales of the fish. 
um, and protect them from from any like changes in that in that water environment that they're swimming in. Mm-hmm. Plants, plants, cut back your plants. Cut back your plants. Ties, just the time. Ugly leaves, and mm-hmm. just you'll see where you can split them this time of the year. Mm-hmm. Repot. And, and repot them. Mm-hmm. That's definitely something you can do. Mm-hmm. And it's important to check your UV. You, if you left your UV out over winter, shame on you. Yes. <laughs> you know, it, it needs to be taken care of uh, properly. And you need to take it out in the fall and you need to clean it. Mm-hmm. And you need to make sure your UV, first of all, light works. Light and works, now yeah. that you're putting it back in, that UV, same thing. You need to put it back. Make sure that, that your UV is clean because it's inside a quartz sleeve, sleeve mm-hmm. and that sleeve needs to be clean and the light needs to penetrate all of the water that passes through. And remember, you want the water going slow through your UV, not fast, like your feet in your waterfall. Mm-hmm. Yes, you got to make sure of all these things right from the get-go. That way you're not going to have any problems down the line, you know, worse than that. So uh, all this is, is going to be beneficial for your fish. Make sure you're, again, you're not overfeeding them from the beginning and, uh, you know, just take your time on that. It's the biggest it's, problem. Yep, that's the biggest problem. people overfeeding their fish. Yep. Mm-hmm. Just cut it back, you know, and if you see uh, that happening, you know, you don't need to do that all the time. Pond fish are mostly scavengers. Yes, Make they them. Are. Turn them into vegetarians. Make them eat that algae, algae that's driving you crazy. Yeah, that's right. So <laughs> uh, don't go crazy feeding them, okay? That's right. Mm-hmm. All right. Anything else to add, Julio? No, I think we hit all the major points here. Uh, Just get yourself going. You know, uh, that beneficial bacteria that Len talked about is really uh, important. It's called microblift. Microblift. PL. PL, yep. So make sure you get that and get it in your uh, pond right now in the spring. All right? All right. Be back in the garden. Be back in the garden right after these messages. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other composts, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Barlow's Seagirt, New Jersey. Espen Shades Garden Centers and Greenhouse, Monton, Pennsylvania. Ashcombs Farm and Greenhouse, Mechanicsburg, PA. Wanting to up your game in the vegetable garden? With 90 years of organic gardening experience, the Espoma Company has you covered. Espoma Organic Garden Tone is not your average garden variety fertilizer. Garden Tone is especially blended for organic vegetable gardens. Its all-natural formula contains Biotone, a blend of organic ingredients that supplies essential nutrients for strong, healthy plants and mouth-watering vegetables. Its slow-release formula provides continuous feeding. The Biotone contained in Garden Tone is a combination of organic ingredients and beneficial microbes to help roots grow deeper and faster for bigger, more bountiful harvests. Garden Tone is simple to use and safe for people, pets, and the planet. No harmful chemicals or synthetic fertilizers are ever added. You can find Garden Tone at fine garden centers. Visit Espoma.com to find a retailer near you. Garden Tone from Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider, or hear us on the radio each weekend. 
Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Professor Stephen is a friend to Bloomers in the Garden and Bloomers Home and Garden Center, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, He went and called us before leaving his vacation home in Florida. Here, listen to his call. Hello, Len and Julio. I'm on the hotline. I can't believe it. I love it. And it's hot down here because I'm in Florida. But I'm informing you that I'm coming back to New Jersey and um, Bells Lake this Saturday. I'll probably get there on Sunday. I'll see you guys in the garden. And I'm bringing half my garden with me as I do each year. I'm bringing up all my geraniums, which live year after year down here. Very excited to get gardening up in New Jersey again. So I'll see you soon. Love the show. Been listening to you down here in Hernando, Florida, on the West Coast in the swamp. And this is Professor Stephen. You guys have a good day. God bless. Goodbye. Well, I'll tell you what, folks. Professor Stephen, I met him uh, a year ago, and what an incredible man this is. He he comes to the garden center every week. He he comes in there and he and he lightens up the the place. You know he does. He loves plants. He, he'll tell you all about his garden. Uh, matter of fact, I've been to his home, and he's got a uh, he's got an incredible wildflower area. He lives right by the lake, and he has a waterfall going into the lake. Uh, this guy's amazing. Yeah, one of, the, one of the things Julio, that that he talked about is he's bringing all of his plants. Oh, I know geraniums. we talked about geraniums that he's bringing, and yeah. it used, we talked about this a little earlier about that. It was a thing where people would take their geraniums, pull them out of the ground in the fall, and then turn them upside down and let them dry out, and then they'd replant them in the spring, and they would like almost be a resurrection plant. Yeah. And it is, by <laughs> it the is. way, resurrection. Resur- resurrection yeah. Sunday's Sunday. tomorrow. <laughs> That's right. Easter's right. coming up. Yep, Easter is tomorrow. Yes, Everybody, happy Easter while we're thinking about yeah, it. Yeah. Happy Easter, For folks. Sure. For but sure. it's something where you can relocate things. Uh, when we talked to him, we said, yeah. you go, well, gotta watch out. You got a frost free date, didn't change. Yeah, it's still it May 15th. But, um, uh, Again, he's going to have a beautiful garden, like yeah. you said. Good guy, lots Great of guy. fun. Mm-hmm. That lots of fun, and and that uh, he's he's doing well. He is doing well, he, isn't he, Landon? He, 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 he had a major uh, little setback with his heart, but you know he's doing beautifully again. Yeah, and uh, we we are so glad that he's back with us uh, and uh, and healthy again. Yeah, he told me he built a twenty five by twenty five deck and was underwater most of the, <laughs> the uh, last week or two. Oh, brother! <laughs> anyway. a lot of energy. A lot of energy. Yeah, God bless uh, you. All right, we'll be back right. in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomers Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Cole, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower, peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. 
It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomer's in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. Bloomer's in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomer's Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. See me and Julio down by the school. Well, me and Julio. Yeah. For one segment, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe two. Aaron, thank you for, thank you, for pitching in. Yeah, I don't know what's right. going on with my throat, but uh, we'll better. find out. Yes, we will. We'll feel find better, out. sir. Yeah. yeah. Um... What did you learn, Aaron? Well, the, uh, Japanese we, maples. Yeah, do you want a Japanese maple now? I, I, so. I, I do. I, I was considering putting one in my backyard, right? Yeah. But now I think I want to put it in my front yard. Yeah, there you go. I, I yeah. think uh, share it, show it off. You know, Japanese yeah, maples. That'd be awesome. Absolutely, There's something for my kids to do. We'll, we'll yeah. plant them. You know what I mean? That's yeah. it. Get them out in the garden. Absolutely, bar. get them out in the garden. <laughs> 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 uh, I don't know. I tell you, hummingbirds amaze me just simply oh, because yeah. they can. They're hatched here. You know, this is, uh, it is a holy weekend. Now, how, did, how did they know? And this is like, if you're wondering, like, you know, is there a God? Well, all right, how does a hummingbird hatched in New Jersey know how to fly across the Gulf of Mexico back to where mm-hmm. it needs to be? It's just program and what do we, what do we call it? It's uh, design, right? Design. Intelligent, design. Yeah. Intelligent design. Intelligent design. Anyway, everybody, I hope you have a happy Easter. Yes. And mm-hmm. we'll see you next week, the same time. Aaron will be here. Yes. Hosting. Yeah. <laughs> in the garden. In the garden. Filling in. Filling we're gonna, in. Yeah, we are going to have David Wilson. <laughs> he, he was yeah, uh, right. from Over the Vest Nursery yeah, as our guest. Great guy. See you next week. See you in the garden. See you in the garden. Mm-hmm.